Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Slavic here. Today, I'm gonna get some criticism for this video because of my dope hat, but I don't care. But anyways, we're doing another maintenance video here. This is a 2006 YZ450, Peter's bike. That's loose, that's the problem. That That is the problem, Peter. You gotta get that fixed. But anyways, I already did a valve adjustment on this thing, but I didn't get a chance to actually get a video in. And uh, we cleaned the carb a little, did some tuning on the carb. The bike's not starting, so I screwed up somewhere, but I'm gonna use this opportunity while I take it apart to just show you guys how to do a valve adjustment and not to screw up the timing, because I'm pretty sure I messed up the timing on it. So let's get started into it. All right, we got the valve cover off. Now we need to set this at top dead center. We need to remove this. And this one. Once you've gotten that off, take a size 17. You gotta set this at top dead center. So rotate it counterclockwise, like so. And you want, you want it right there. So basically you want the dot right there. On the on the sprocket to match right here and on this side same thing there's a dot right there if you can see it and it needs to match here so they have to be even and then down here there's a marking on the flywheel I'll get a light real quick that it needs to be on that marking as well I don't see a marking there so that's telling me Something's off. Okay, so now you can see the marking. I'm trying to get you guys to see it. It's really hard to see, but there's a marking that looks kind of like an H. It's just one mark that's connected to the other mark in the shape of an H, and then right next to that, there's a second mark. And uh, you want to connect it or match it to the second mark with this little, little thing right there, little notch. And then, like I said here, you want to connect the dot on the sprocket to the to be even up here, and same with this one. And as you can see here, this one is off. See how the dot is above? So we need to make the sprocket go down one tooth. How we're going to do that is we've already taken the bolt off of this tensioner, and you're going to turn this, take a, a flathead screwdriver, turn this tensioner in. And while you turn it in, the timing chain is going to get uh, softer. And once you turn it all the way, it's going to lock. So you can take your tool out, and you see how that's loose. Now we can turn the sprocket and uh, turn it down one. And then we also want to make sure that these sprockets move freely. If they're tight, that means there something's wrong. So these seem fine. 
So we're going to take our feeler gauges now and the owner's manual says the exhaust should be at a 0.20 to 0.25 millimeters or if it's in inches 0 0.008 uh, to 0 0.010 inches and the intake 0.10 to 0.15 millimeters or 0 0.004 to 0 0.006 in inches. Take your feeler gauge and measure your valve clearances now. So we're going to start off with the smallest one. So we're going to start off with the smaller one. That's a 0 0.004 in inches for the intake and we're going to get the measurements. That goes in. That's, it goes, oops, it goes in, but it's like, it's too little tight. And this side goes in, good. We're going to take a 0 .003 and measure that metal one. And it feels like it's about a 0 .003. Now we're going to measure these ones again. Feels like it's about a 0 0.005. No, that doesn't really go in. So this is a 0 0.004, 0 0.005, 0 0.003 in the middle. I'm going to change all of them because as the valves wear and everything, the gap's actually going to get smaller. So we're going to try to get on the higher end of the of the measurements which we're trying to be at a 0 0.006 at the most so we're going to try to be at around a 0 0.005 to 6. This one is pretty on spec so I'm probably not going to change it. So now for the exhaust side we're going to put a 0 0.008 it's the smallest size that goes in pretty good. side is goes in but it's a little on the tight side these are both a little on the tight side so let's see if a point zero zero nine goes in you shouldn't need to force these in nine doesn't go in there point zero zero nine doesn't go in there so both of them are a little on the tight side so I'm gonna drop the shim size one size on both of these to get to maybe a 0.9 or 0 0.009 and on this side I'm gonna change I think these two. I'm gonna take these off and crisscross so start right here not all the way just a little bit at a time So we're going to start with one side at a time, which we're going to do the intake side first because I don't want the chain to fall off. We're just going to pop this guy off real quick. Yeah, we're going to have to redo the timing over here a little bit, but that's okay. Take this cover off. Just wiggle it side to side. Once you get it off, don't lose the this little C clip thing. I don't know what it's called. Right there. Stay organized and clean. Now take a magnet. Unfortunately for me. All I have is a refrigerator magnet right now, but take a magnet and take the buckets off with the shim inside. Be careful not to drop it. Cover cover that up so you don't drop any shim shims in there. And make sure to stay organized so 
I'm gonna put it in order like this from left to right. All right, so we got our shims out and this one's not worn out because I changed this one already. This was a 1.55. The one I, the one right here that was on the very far left is all, uh, like you can't see any marking and this is when this tool comes into play. And make sure yours is actually working properly because the last one I had was way off and I had to return it and get this one. So the shim in here is a 1.4 probably won't see that but this is reading 1.4 so this is accurate now we're going to take this and we're going to read that shim and that's how we'll know the size of that and then we can do the math i've already done the math for these two shims and it's right here what i need is a 1.35 in the middle 1.53 probably 1.5 for the right side i know this one's kind of on spec but it was a little tight on the on the 0 0.005 so I'm thinking if I go down one size, then it'll be a little tight on the 0 .06, 0 .006, and that'd be perfect. It's better to be on the high side than the low side. And the way you do the math is A equals B minus C plus D. A is the new shim size, B is the recorded clearance, C is the, um, the specs that you want to be at, and D is the shim that's already in there. So that's kind of how I did it. Um, I got, let's see, let's go for the middle shim. It was a 0 .003 clearance. Uh, make that into millimeters, that's a 0 .08. And then you do 0 .08 minus 0 .13, which is kind of where I want to be right in the middle. That would be uh, 0 .005 in inches. But it was 0 .08 minus 0 .03 plus 1.4 which was my shim size and then we get down to 1.35 so that's how you do the math if that doesn't make sense let me know in the comments i'll try to explain a little better but yeah let's get the clearance on this guy and do the math for him as well after you figured out your clearance put the shims back in be very careful don't want to drop anything and then put the buckets on top and put them so they just slide right in apply some assembly lube on these parts I'm using some Lucas assembly lube What's that? What's that? What's that? Next you want to put this on What's that? What's that? Just align it right on shouldn't take much. I like to take the cam bolts, spray them with some contact cleaner and put some Loctite before I put them on. You only tighten this up to about seven foot pounds, seven to eight foot pounds. So I'm putting some Loctite just to be on the safe side. It's gonna be, you know, not very tight. Repeat the process on this side. Wiggle this off, take the chain off, take the cam off. You guys know the whole Shazam. Alright, so we got our marking top dead center here. Put the chain on. We tighten these the cam bolts, cam cap bolts to seven foot pounds, seven, eight foot pounds. Um, we got the marking, if you can see that, aligned with this. Same thing on this side. This marking's up here, this marking's up here. Marked uh, here at top dead center on the flywheel and uh, one thing that you should check is Loosen up the timing chain. So Tighten this in again so that the timing chain is loose And you want to make sure after you've tightened it down to the spec that these move freely and they're not tight See these are good That's when you know they're not too tight and that everything is working as it should then you want to Turn this out, or uh, counterclockwise, so the chain tightens back up. And then one more thing to check to make sure that everything is set up, is that these valves, they're about the same, pointing the opposite of each other. You don't want this one to be way up, and this one to be straight, or anything like that. These are pretty on point right now. So, we're ready to put the valve cover back on. Don't forget to double check your work.
We're at a nine there. Right about a nine there too. Already checked these. We're at right about a six, six and a half right here. Or right, right here. About a six to seven here. And we're at a, a six in, um, on the far left side. So a little on the high end on this side, but that's okay because the more wear it goes in, the tighter it's gonna become. So. All right, we got her put all back together. We haven't touched the carburetor yet. Um, it was a little on the lean side, so I wanted to mess with the carb, but before we get into too many changes, I wanted to make sure the timing was on. Uh, the valves are on spec, which they're good right now. Uh, so let's see how she runs. Be loud. Wish me luck, guys. Dad, the iron I swear to you guys, it's the hat. It's the hat, trust me. She runs good, I hope Peter's happy with this so we can go riding soon. That's how you do the valve adjustment, guys. Hope it helped somebody, added some value to somebody. Uh, I know I was a little confused on how the cam sat and after a lot of research, I did it as good as I possibly could. I think it went really smooth. And uh, yeah, that's, that's how you do it, guys. So I hope it helps somebody out. Um, did a lot of research to make sure everything was good to go and uh, yeah so anyways to the next one thanks for supporting my channel guys hit that like button down below on the bottom right side and there's a subscribe button support the channel thanks for the love guys Take care.